Awesome. So thanks everyone for coming along today. Um, my name is Rob from DCU. I'm going to talk to you about a learning community that I facilitate called Moodle Munch. Um, community or communities, uh, well, there's been lots of words and lots of terms. I think we, we, we can associate with the past almost two years and lots of terms we learned. Um, one word that really resonates and sticks out with me is the word community, both in a negative sense. I suppose we've learned that the term community transmission, which uh, we don't probably look too positively on. But I think there's been a huge positive sentiment associated with the word community. And I think it was summed nicely in the editorial to the Ilka Journal um, last year's issue, uh, where the editors really talked about the importance of how we as a, as a higher education community, as an ed tech community, came together uh, to strengthen one another, to support one another during the crisis and, and how that continues. So communities are really important to me and I'm really kind of beginning to appreciate at a more deeper level their importance and their relevance in, in my own practice. Communities of practice is probably something we're very familiar with from Labe and Wenger, a group of people who share a concern or a passion for something they do and they learn how to do it as they uh, interact regularly. Uh, we're probably all members of different communities, communities of practice, and in fact, you might like to take a moment in the chat and tell me what are some of the communities you're involved in, either professionally or, 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 or personally, um, because I think if we stop to think and we, we, we look at this uh, description here of what a community of practice is, we can probably think that we're actually involved in quite a few of them. And why would we be involved in, 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 in communities of practice? They're very useful for developing professional uh, knowledge and, uh, and they're, they're, they're a vehicle for professional learning um, because professional learning needs time, resources, preparation, um, and needs to, of course, be linked to professional practice. Um, in DCU, where I work in the Teaching Enhancement Unit, we believe in the power of, of communities and in supporting those who teach to come together to develop their practice. And some of the communities that we facilitate in DC include the Sipping Point, my colleague Claire Gormley, that's a kind of a lunch and learn style community where academics share experiences of teaching. Uh, my colleague Lisa Donaldson uh, facilitates some advanced HE triads where uh, communities of, of, of academics come together to develop and work and reflect on their practice with a view to applying for an advanced HE fellowship. We also have a learning technologies users network in, in, in DCU where learning technologists come together to support one another. And there's various others as well. Externally, we're involved in a number of communities. My, my colleague Fiona Reardon and, and Mary Fitzpatrick from UL have uh, facilitated a wonderful uh, COP around uh, assessment and they have a fantastic uh, summary resource that, that the community developed, which is fantastic. And then obviously the community that I want to talk about today is one called Moodle Munch. Uh, so Moodle Munch is obviously based around the Moodle open source uh, VLE. And I suppose being an open source platform, Moodle has always had a strong community aspect to it. And I, I think, you know, I learned all my Moodle knowledge and developed all my Moodle skill from the Moodle community, from listening to people, talking to people, and learning from people both, you know, on Moodle discussion boards and in open textbooks and open articles and so on. And uh, over the years, I've really felt part of the Moodle community. And uh, the Moodle community runs uh, great annual events, Moodle, Mo Moodle Moots, uh, which are great opportunities for professional learning. But, you know, they kind of tend to happen only, 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 only once a year. Obviously, since COVID, a lot of them have gone online or some of them have been postponed and so on. So I kind of saw a need really to kind of bridge a gap and continue the professional learning both in between the moots, which, which only happen once a year, and also to try and reach out and, and encourage more people to, to, to join the Moodle community and learn more about Moodle. So I started commencing planning in early 2020 for a, a Moodle Munch community, and I've run kind of two series of events, um, and I'm currently running the third series at the moment. And um, so, so what I'm going to talk to you about today is really some, some findings from from my evaluation at the end of uh, season series two. Um, so the community comes together in, in, in monthly webinars at lunchtime with the food motif, hence the word munch, lunch, lunchtime comes from. Uh, all happens on Zoom. Uh, we kind of have uh, two short presentations from uh, a member of the Moodle community showcasing some story or, of, of, of what they do with Moodle to enhance digital teaching and learning. There's lots of Q&A and discussion and sharing of resources and things like that. Um, and, and of course, I circulate material afterwards. Uh, in, in, instead of it just being a sort of a, a, a free-for-all almost, I was conscious that you know there needed to be kind of some structure to the community so people could kind of see uh, what was upcoming and what would be relevant to them and to their practice. So I used the Digicomp EDU framework to structure 
the, um, the, 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 the webinars and you can see there, there's the entire framework, there's six areas and I think 22 specific competencies within each of the areas. And um, by the end of C series two, a lot of our um, uh, community webinars have focused on those um, competences there that are, that are highlighted, particularly focused around digital resources assessment, teaching and learning and empowering learners. Um, we, we cover things like teaching with Moodle, universal design, H5P, assessments, reports, integrations, Mahara. That's just a, a snapshot, really, but kind of anything to do with Moodle or, or, or related technologies or related practices to Moodle um, are the kind of things that, that are up for discussion. So it's not um, aimed simply at developers. It's not aimed simply at, you know, IT managers. It's aimed really at um uh, educators, those who teach with with, with Moodle, are, are the primary audience. Although, of course, we do have plenty of developers um, in the community as well. Um, and we've had wonderful, wonderful contributions from from a vast array of people, including I see Alison is here in the room. Alison gave us a great uh, presentation uh, on on H five P, and there's possibly others here as well who have contributed. But we have a diverse range of of people who presented these community webinars from across Ireland, but also from from further afield, uh, uh, as you can see there. Uh, as I said, I evaluated the, the community at, at the end of the second series just to see, you know, were people learning from it, were people getting something from it, because, you know, community of practice is supposed to uh, enable people to learn and to do better at the things they do over time. Um, so overall, we can see kind of membership has, has, has increased up to 350. We can see uh, across the different webinars that, 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 that were organized in 2020 and 2021. Uh, an increase in the number of attendees and an increase in the number of registrants and about kind of 62% of uh, registrants end up becoming attendees at the event. Uh, most people are from Ireland, as you can expect, followed then by Great Britain, but then we have a smattering of people from the community coming from the US, coming from Italy, Sweden, Switzerland, um, Poland and, and so on, but, but by and large it's, it's, it's Ireland and the UK. Um, I issued a, a, an anonymous survey at the end of series two, um, that were comprised of mostly Likert scale questions, got a response rate of around 25% uh, uh, from, from those that I issued it to. So I'm just gonna quickly show you some of the um, results. And what I will say when I'm finished here, I'll put the links to my slides in the chat so you can have a look at the, the slides in a bit more detail. There's probably a bit too much on the screen here for you to look at. But overall people uh, found the webinars were, were easy to follow, which is great. People found the webinars were interesting, uh, also, also great, and that they were relevant to their context. That's, of course, very important for a, for a community of practice and, uh, and to enable professional learning. The, the, the learning itself obviously needs to be linked and, and related to one's own practice. Uh, people learned new things in the webinars. People learned new things in the Q&A and discussion. So again, it's, 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 the webinars aren't really about um, uh, divulging and transmitting information but it's about sharing a story and then really the the the, the great things happen i think in the q a and in the discussion part of the webinars and it's great to see that our our, our community members felt so as well great to see that most people um either agree or strongly agree that they've already applied something in the practice so that's wonderful because very often we can go to webinars and go to events and we learn interesting things but then we never do anything with them but we can see here that a lot of our Moodle Munch uh, community members have actually applied something to their practice um and if they haven't that they certainly do as you can see here plan to apply it in the future uh, which is great to see what are the things that they want from the community? They want to learn more about learning analytics. They want to learn more about learning design, assessment, UDL, et cetera. So I've, I've kind of incorporated some of those um, themes into our current series that's, that's underway. Uh, and, and of course, if there's anyone out there uh, who, who's interested in Moodle and has some interesting stories that they want to share, particularly on these topics, please do get in touch and we'd, we'd love to, to, to have you speak to our community on it. Uh, other things that the, our, our community members enjoy about the community is the kind of the bite-sized, the focused approach. They're always learning something new. It's widening their perspectives on Moodle. And it's been noted that it's good for novice users uh, to learn. And that's, that's particularly good to see, I think, as well, that, that uh, uh, new people to Moodle can use this. Maybe two minutes, uh, Rob. Perfect, almost there, Eamon. So, so where are we now? As I said, series three is underway. We have our next uh, webinar coming up on Tuesday, the 1st of February. 
where we are going to be talking about the Moodle board plugin. If anyone was at Monica Ward's presentation uh, before lunch, she was talking about Moodle boards. I'm going to have a, a Moodle lunch presentation on that to look at that board plugin in more detail. Uh, if you're interested in signing up for a mailing list and being notified of um, upcoming uh, community webinars, uh, you can sign up to the mailing list there. And then all upcoming webinars and the links to register and all previous recordings are available on our webpage, dcu.ie forward slash Moodle Munch. So um, I will leave it at that and say thank you all very much.